The results are in MRI for Brock Purdy. It is a torn UCL in his throwing elbow. The quarterback is to miss six months, which will put him out of the entire offseason, but he should be back for training camp. What does that mean for the San Francisco 49ers offseason and young Brock Purdy? Coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Here we go. Day one of the offseason, Croc, and it's uh, going to be quick, another doozy. Why is Trey Lance uh, trending on Twitter right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not stop this team, Croc. Like, this is crazy. Every offseason, you cannot have a normal offseason with the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, it begins with this big bombshell news, according to Schefter and Tom Pelissero and everybody out there. Uh, it's uh, it's a torn UCL. This is from Tom Pelissero. 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy suffered a complete tear of his UCL, which is ligament, ulnar collateral ligament, which is in uh, is in your elbow. And this says that was his throwing arm. He will undergo surgery per sources. Purdy is getting second opinions, but the initial hope is he can undergo a repair, not reconstruction, a.k.a. Tommy John surgery, and will be ready for training camp. So this is like borderline good news that Brock Purdy is going to be out only six months and not a full year because of Tommy John surgery. Now Purdy is going to get the second opinion. I It'd be shocking if the second opinion was like, oh, no, your, your ligament's not actually torn, right? So... I think the only thing that could come from a second opinion is probably Tommy John surgery where they're like, no, this isn't just a normal surgery. We're gonna have to reconstruct this whole thing. Like, you know, what happens to a lot of baseball players. So it's so looking right now. There's not going to be an off season for Brock Purdy, but if there, everything goes well, he'll be back for training camp. So if he was going to be QB one and win that job, he'll still have an opportunity to throw in camp. Hopefully he is 100% by training camp and we can have that quarterback competition because now there's not much option for the 49ers this offseason, right? Outside of, you know, and they already had to bring some people in, but man, um, Trey Lance, you're not going to dangle Trey Lance in trade, right? If you don't have anybody else. Um, so that's why Trey Lance is trending because that competition, he just got a little boost in that competition because he gets to take those first team reps now through OTAs. It might've been Brock Purdy. Like let's start there, Croc, really quick, but just let's, let's pretend Brock Purdy didn't get hurt or he gets really good news on his second opinion. Would he have taken the first team reps in OTAs once Trey Lance is also healthy because Trey Lance currently isn't healthy either. <laughs> I, I feel so bad for Kyle Shanahan. <laughs> It's like, why can't he just have a normal quarterback situation? But, yeah, uh, you know, when you look at it, I, I assume, right, and this is kind of how I've been answering it, that this was Brock Purdy's job to lose. And that was just kind of how it felt. Like, you watched him play well. You still don't know exactly what Trey Lance is. And Lance has this really high upside. And we've seen this splash plays, and we've seen the ability. And you're looking for consistency, right? And if he – and now, now if he – puts consistency with his talent, then hey, this is a legit competition. But right now, I would assume that with what Brock Purdy has shown you, right, the floor of whatever he is is good enough to reach an NFC Championship game with it. And I think because of that, you'd have to say, yeah, this is this is his job to lose. And, you know, barring anything crazy from a crazy jump from Trey Lance. But now with this injury, that opens the door for Trey Lance to, you know, kind of endear himself back to the team, you know, throw, uh, you know, look good. If he comes in sharp, then it will be a real competition. I thought there would be some kind of competition where it's just like, all right, look, we, we used a lot of draft capital on Trey Lance. So he will, we will give him an opportunity to try to unseat Brock Purdy, but it's kind of Brock Purdy's job to lose. But now it's, it's it, if, if, if Trey, 
comes in firing, then it's going to be a real it's going to be a real competition, and that's going to be interesting. I think it's huge. It, this couldn't be bigger for Trey Lance because not only does it allow Trey Lance all off season long to get all the reps that he needs, and he will get the most reps no matter who the 49ers bring in. We'll talk about a little bit later what that means because because they're you know you have one healthy quarterback going into actually you have zero healthy quarterbacks right now because Jimmy Garoppolo is a free agent. Brock Purdy's hurt for six months, probably at least. And Trey Lance is still not ready to participate in anything. You don't have to participate in anything until that first mini camp right before the draft. So you have a couple months there. And I think, I think they say he will be ready for OTAs. Ready for all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but you need what three, three fully healthy quarterbacks to get through training camp anyway. So they have to add a player there, whether it's free agency or the draft, and it might be both for the 49ers. Right. So they're going to add bodies to the position. What those what resources they spend on those bodies is, is a big question. And there's a lot to get to with the 49ers off season. And uh, we know what the, the salary cap is now 49ers about 16 and a half million projected under the salary cap going into the year, have 35 players under contract. And as you know, Croc, you need a whole lot more than 35 players to start a season. So uh, a lot of decisions to be made for the 49ers and where to spend the, the limited money that they have left and got to pay Bosa. So uh, a lot of questions there. And of course we will cover all of those questions, but we're talking with quarterbacks right now today because of this Brock Purdy news. So Brock Purdy is not healthy, but I think that with a healthy Brock Purdy and a healthy Trey Lance, it would have been a, a straight up competition. Like I think it would have been a legit competition with Trey Lance. If both these quarterbacks were in camp, but who gets the first they, team? Like, like the, the, the first the, day of OTAs, who is the first guy out there? Yeah, I, I think it would have been up to Lance to beat out Purdy, but Purdy would have gotten right. the first rep, right? But it would have been split. It wouldn't have been like, oh, normal, you get all the reps because you're the first team guy, then second team guy gets fewer reps. It would have been like straight up 50-50 split, I think. But Purdy gets the first reps. And, and also, I don't think it's one of those situations where people say, if you have two QBs, you have none, right? I think it's we know what Purdy is. We are good with Kurt Purdy being our starter. Yes. We'll give Lance an opportunity. But it's not yes. one of those things where it's, well, we don't know if we have a quarterback and they have to compete to. Like like maybe the Seahawks going into the year where it was like Drew Locke and Geno. And I think they knew they wanted to go with Geno, but it felt like a real competition where I, I think this would have been leaning towards Brock Purdy unless Trey Lance makes that jump. Yeah, it, it would have been like, okay, we're good with Brock Purdy. Trey, prove you're better. And if you do, awesome, because that means we're even better, right? And, right. and it would raise the ceiling, I think, because of what we've seen Trey Lance could do. And, and, and Trey Lance has shown signs of being potentially that guy. So I, I don't think it was a slam dunk that Brock Purdy was going to win that job anyway. But I think mm, You said out otherwise about a month or so ago. No, I did not say that. You said, yes. I said that, no, I don't think I did say that. You said if it's a competition, Purdy's winning. That's what you said. Oh, I don't think so. I think we got to pull the audio on that one. Maybe some we're of the We're going to pull the audience. <laughs> the audience will tell you that. You said that. Yeah. Oh, you I don't said think that. so. I'll, fi I don't, I'll find that episode. I don't we, think we it would have been that episode. definitive that Trey Lance couldn't beat out Brock Purdy. Because that would be kind of a weird thing to say. Because oh, we don't know with Brock Purdy. I, I mean, we don't know with Trey Lance. I got to find it. I feel like it was like a live episode too. <laughs> okay. Um, but Brock Purdy is uh, played awesome, right? And if Brock Purdy is that guy that we saw, then it was going to be tough for Trey Lance to beat him out. But Trey Lance obviously has some physical gifts that Brock Purdy does not. And it's the reason they were drafted in, in such different places in their respective NFL drafts. All right. Now, does not mean that, you know, got to make sure you preference that being drafted does not mean that you're the better quarterback, but mm -hmm. typically <laughs> the, the guys going in the first round just have a different set of tools that yes. they're working with that other guys just don't have. Now, that guy with the tools might never reach that potential as opposed to a guy that's Mr. Irrelevant and he comes in and is like, hey, I'm ready to go. But if that guy with the tools does reach, and it is a big if, because you see a lot of guys – just miss on those type of type of quarterbacks, but if, if you hit, then you know it's you know it's it sets your franchise right. You just have a little bit more that you're able to do. Yes, absolutely. 
Okay, we got to dig deeper into this. Uh, talk about some other names potentially that could be added to the list of quarterbacks that are in camp with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. And is it still possible that Trey Lance doesn't doesn't end up being the guy who's in training camp with Brock Purdy too? We've got to explore everything because you can't rule out anything with this football team. Next. Today's episode brought to you by Blue Nile. Valentine's Day coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. And uh, I don't need to tell you all lovebirds out there that you've probably had your date plans on the calendar for weeks now. But uh, maybe you have found the perfect Valentine's Day gift and maybe not. And generally, I never have found the perfect Valentine's Day gift. And I need all the help I can get when I'm shopping for any holiday for any woman in my life. And whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, take your relationship to the next level, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of her dream. Simple online tools let you choose the diamond shape and size and clarity and the setting style and everything like that. And the Blue Nile jewelers go to work and handcraft the perfect piece to your specifications. Every order insured arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free and so are returns. Right now, you can save 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com up to 50% off BlueNile.com. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen every day here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And make sure you check out everything going on with Locked On at the Senior Bowl. And uh, perfect timing here as the 49ers se season kind of came to an abrupt end. We, we all hoped the season wouldn't be over right now. But in that lull in the week before the Super Bowl, the Senior Bowl is placed perfectly right in that hole. And you can get inside analysis from all the hosts that covered the – NFL's next generation in college. Find out which NFL draft boards these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, one Eric Crocker will be there. In fact, Croc, the moment you put down your headphones, you're on your way to Mobile, Alabama. Is that correct? Bags are packed, ready to go, ready to hop in the whip. I got about a five-hour drive or so. It's going to be cool because you know who you're going to see in Mobile, Alabama, Croc? No, you know, I'm kind of going into it blind this year, but I kind of like that. There were prospects like that last year where you hear certain names. People say, oh, look for this guy. I remember Calvin Austin was one and then walked away like, man. And then you had Tariq Woolen. And, you know, I knew Christian Watson. I knew he was going to be there. I knew uh, Pierce. But I like kind of going in there with this unbiased opinion, other prospects, and just seeing who pops, who stands out. So uh, I'm going in a little blind this year. Uh, you might catch a glimpse, Croc, of one of the players that's going to be in training camp with the San Francisco 49ers out of Fresno State quarterback Jake Hayner, a.k.a. the next Tom Brady, a.k.a. the next Brock Purdy. So <laughs> throw that name in the mix there for well, the 49ers. <laughs> he, like, snapped his ankle but came back this year. So from an injury standpoint, he fits the mold of 49er quarterbacks. Exactly, right? Yeah, he, he's going to be a guy that – you think is maxed out. He's going to get in Kyle Shanahan's system. And you go, oh, wait a second. Forget Trey Lance. Forget Brock Purdy. What about Jake Hayner? He's the next guy. And then breaks his leg. And then you go back to who who, who knows. God knows what's going to happen with this San Francisco 49ers team. I mean, this you, is crazy. You go back to 60-year-old Tom Brady. Yeah, Tom Brady. So, so th those are the names. Like, And actually, I, I think Jake Hayner is a great fit for, for Kyle Shanahan and the San Francisco 49ers. And I, a lot of people really like him locally, and they think he's going to go higher than he is. I, I think he's going to be a day three guy, and the 49ers have a whole bunch of day three picks. He's tiny. So I could absolutely see Jake Hayner being one of those guys for the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Greg Pinelli just... loves him. Oh, Pinelli Greg, likes him? Greg loves him. I'm, okay. Greg trains him. So. Oh, okay. You know, but – he does say, as, as far as mechanics go, as clean as he's seen, extremely smart, hard worker, all, all the things that when you think of a Shanahan quarterback, right? Like I mean, he's not big, but but he is mobile. He can move. And the one thing, unlike some of these other guys, and I don't know, I guess if you go back and watch some of Garoppolo's uh, uh, film from Eastern Illinois, you might say different, but it doesn't feel like the quarterbacks right now that they have are just these pure just drop back quarterbacks, right? Like just guys, you put in a shotgun, spread it out, and throw the ball 50 times. Well, Hayner's done that 
at Florida State, at Fresno State, excuse me. So, uh, we'll see. Slightly different, but he can move. Got some mobility to him. Uh, yeah, good arm. He's, he's West Coast Bryce Young, right? Yeah. Six feet, 195 or whatever. Yeah, skinnier than Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, no, about the same, about the same. Neither one of those guys are, are very big. But what's funny is when you read the scouting report for Jake Hayner, and this you know, we're getting kind of off on a tangent here. Oh, real quick, real quick, because I feel yeah. like a little disrespect there, um, sleeping on the West Coast. Bryce Young is from California. So let's make that. Oh, okay. And Jake Hayner's not, right? I know. I think he went to Washington first. But... Yeah, he was a, yeah, he's Washington. You're right. Washington. And then so he, he stayed on the West Coast. I don't know where he grew up, though. Is he a Fresno guy? Is that why he came back? I to... Valley guy? Anyway, up. when we when we I don't, I don't I don't have any scouting reports up right now for Jake Hayner, but I bet I bet come draft time we could read a Jake Hayner scouting report and a Brock Purdy scouting report and they would sound darn near identical. He, he is from California, Danville, California. Oh, Danville. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. No, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's a Bay Area guy. Yeah, that's why everyone loves him so much too. Give him a little extra credit. So there you go. He looks very serious every time I look at his face. <laughs> He's a serious He's dude, so man. Serious. He's a gamer. He's, you know, tough, accurate, high football IQ. The next Brock Purdy, man. Um, you so you mentioned another name there. Date. What's that? So the guy you want your daughter to date. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, first guy oh, in, last guy out. First guy in, last guy out. Yep. Sneaky, <laughs> sneaky athletic. Uh, you know who's not sneaky athletic? That's one thing that's never been on the scouting report is Tom Brady. And Tom Brady is absolutely going to be another name that's in the mix with this whole thing. Does this make it more likely that the 49ers just say, ah, too much unknown. Let's go get a veteran quarterback. Jimmy Garoppolo, free agent. Do you bring Jimmy G back? Tom Brady, do you bring him home for one more run with your football team and throw that guy into the mix with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy potentially? Um, do you still entertain trades for Trey Lance, right? There's a ton of questions with this football team going forward now, and it, it just adds to the questions with Brock Purdy not being healthy. I, I think that the Tom Brady thing is probably the most likely to happen out of some of the scenarios you said. And, and the reason why is because you bring him in, it's like the younger guys, you you just take a back seat, right? Like this isn't – there. there won't be a competition. It won't be this – um, all right, you know, Trey Lance, we'll see, or okay, Brock, you know, like, no, like, I'm Tom Brady, just sit behind me and learn, <laughs> watch as I do, and you know what you're getting from him, as opposed to bringing somebody else in, even bringing Jimmy Garoppolo back, and not knowing, I mean, will he beat out Brock Purdy, or will he beat out Trey Lance, right, like, you know, Trey Lance, another offseason, it's like, oh, well, there's just so much unknown for what you probably have to pay him, so I think the likely thing would be Tom Brady. Now, would they do it? You know, I don't know. I I wouldn't do it because I like Brock Purdy and I like the upside of Trey Lance. So we'll see. I, I I'm 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 comfortable with if Brock Purdy coming back for like no, and I don't know the I don't know the ramifications of this injury. Like, is this gonna you know make his arm weaker? Because if that's the case, <laughs> that's because he's not he doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle room with that arm strength. So, but let's say you you just get the Brock Purdy that we just saw, and you can guarantee me he'll be that. Uh, then I'm, I'm he's a he's a starting NFL quarterback. Like I'm I'm good. I'm good on Purdy. Yeah, you're good on Purdy, and you you, you have that um, X factor, the unknown in Trey Lance. And if Trey Lance is even better, then awesome, right? And you got a right. great starter, great backup. And if Trey Lance isn't as good, then you figure out what to do with Trey Lance later, and you still have your starter in Brock Purdy. But that's a great question with Brock Purdy, and what the overall expectation is for his arm. Will it be six months plus he's not going to be good for a while and in the beginning of the season is in doubt? Or is it like, oh, he's going to be, you know, mostly 100% in five months and then he'll be cleared in six months to be like, go, go, you know, like full, full go contact, whatever, you know, in six months. Is it an expectation of your arm will be just as strong as it was before when you come back? I know a lot of times with Tommy John, your arm can come back even stronger. Right. And some baseball players have elective Tommy John surgery because they know it's going to go and there's like a fray there anyway. And they know they just have to wait a year, go through the process. Their arm will be back to better than it was and actually even stronger than it was. And you can gain some miles per hour. So I, I wonder if that's a possibility in, in this scenario. You know, just yeah. Trey Lance with, I mean, uh, Brock Purdy with just a little tick better arm. <laughs> that? We're talking Henry Rollingardner, Gardner, Rookie of the Year type stuff. For all these 90s kids. 
I don't know if Brock Purdy can afford to be out of here. The, the one thing about draft status, right, it, the higher you go, you'll just likely get more opportunities. Like, if, if Trey Lance has played the way he played, right, where you see flashes, but he was a seventh-round pick, he would, he would be an afterthought right now as opposed to, you know, uh, a, a first-round pick. You're going to give him opportunities. Oh, right. But when you're a seventh-round pick and, okay, you did well and it looked really good, but then you have surgery and you miss a whole year, you start to become like this, we're moving on. Because you can move on quickly from it. That, that's the whole thing with it. How, how much did we invest in you to be able to move on from you? And that's just the business side of the NFL. I was with the New York Jets. They did not invest much in Eric Crocker. So, oh, man, uh, Chris Ivory rolled his ankle. Uh, Joe McKnight had a, high, uh, a concussion and RIP Joe McKnight. And uh, who is the center? Gosh, can't think of his name right now. Or guard. Can't think of his name right now. But anyways, they're down. Oh, well, we need to let somebody go from another position so we can bring in guys that play in the game. Oh, Eric Crocker. Well, we didn't invest anything in him. Right. So it's just it, and it's different because you've seen Brock Purdy and he played well. But the, the, the less amount that they invest in, you, the more likely they are to move on from you. So as well as Brock Purdy played, I don't think he can sit out an entire year and then just come back like everything's normal. I agree. I think you're right about that. And it might be just the crack that Trey Lance needs to, by the time, you know, the season ends where he actually does play a full season. It's like, ah, there's too much here and we've invested too much and, and we think it's going to be better. And we still don't know what Brock Purdy is, you know, with another off season. All right. By the way, do you think it's, do you think it's uh, ironic that this is the same injury that Nick Mullins had in his oh. last, the last, the last time Nick Mullins was on the field for the San Francisco 49ers. This is the injury that happened to him. And I think the 49ers have some inside information to what, well, actually, they didn't really see him after that, right? But it took him a while to find a team, I remember, the next season because it was such a long, um, and now he ended up back with the Minnesota Vikings. But uh, did he, so yeah, he was Cleveland last year. That's right. So after Jimmy Garoppolo was hurt and then Mullins got hurt, and this was the injury that Mullins had. And it looks like he did catch back on with, Browns just for one game in 2021. Yeah. Nick Nick Mullins, man. I mean, the tough thing with him, not this ultra talented guy. Threw for a bunch of yards, then win games. Uh Brock Purdy, again, that if if he loses any arm strength, things can get weird for him. If there's and that's the and that's kind of the that's one of the the issues with this. If you think that Brock Purdy, if if any you know, if there's a ten percent chance that Brock Purdy comes back and his arms not as strong, that's that's tough. That's gonna be tough because he was already at that level of like, okay, you're you're at the level that's passable to be an NFL starter and have this arm, but you can't have less. So if he right. if there's a chance he comes back with less, then you can't count on him, even if it is after six months being the guy. So that's the scary part of this. Yeah. So, so what do you do at the quarterback position? Do you want to start throwing out some names that uh, guys you potentially? Yes. Yeah. Let's 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 get into more specific names of what could happen with the San Francisco 49ers next. Really excited about our latest sponsor, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, FanDuel. This year, it's the only app you need at your Super Bowl party because FanDuel is America's number one sports book. We're super excited about our new sports betting partner because FanDuel is the number one sports book in America. And if you are new to FanDuel, that's even better. There are so many ways and great features to make betting on sports fun and easy, especially if you are a new sports better too, because uh, it's the easiest website I've seen for navigating and finding your bets and hitting the money line or point spreads or who will score a touchdown first. Any props you can think of, you can find them. You can even build your own parlays at FanDuel. Download FanDuel now so you can bet the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 57 has a no sweat first bet at FanDuel. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Sounds crazy, right? No sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Best of all, you get paid 
Uh, you get paid uh, your winnings instantly. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, super easy to use. So all you got to do is join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Okay, really quick, before we talk about quarterbacks that could be added to the roster, Crock this offseason. Do you just completely not answer the phone if teams call about Trey Lance? For example, D'Amico Ryans looks like he's on the cusp of maybe becoming the next head coach of the Houston Texans. He has some inside knowledge of Trey Lance. If D'Amico thinks Trey Lance is a dude, he's probably going to be talking to his GM and say, hey, we should call the 49ers about Trey Lance, right? And if the 49ers believe in Brock Purdy and think that it's going to be 100%, I mean, he's going to be back for training camp, right? Could they go the veteran route and still trade Trey Lance? Does the price just go up that much more for Trey Lance if you're the 49ers? Or do you not even think about listening to offers for Trey Lance? I think you always listen, regardless of who, who, who the player is. Every, everybody has a price. Now, what are they willing to give up for Trey Lance? That would be the thing. So if you got multiple first-round picks and you want to give up one of those, sure. All right, yep. let's do it, and we'll get a they veteran. Have, they but have the number talking two. About so just real quick from the Houston Texans perspective, Texans have the second pick in the draft. They also have the 12th pick that they got from Cleveland in the Deshaun Watson trade. They could like uh, if Bryce Young ends up going number one or, you know, they might not have their choice of the number one overall quarterback. Right. Uh, but maybe they do even at number two, maybe a defensive player goes first, but the 12th pick in the draft, if you like, Trey Lance as much as you like Will Levis anyway, and you don't even know if Will Levis is going to get to number 12. You could draft uh, Jalen Carter and then trade for Trey Lance. Is that a better combination? You get Will Anderson, the best defensive player in the draft at two, and trade for Trey Lance with your two first-round picks. Is that better than you know the, your second quarterback on your board at two and then uh, whatever player might be available for you at 12, which is not going to be probably one of the top defensive linemen in the draft? Yeah, in that situation, I'd be like, all right, you know, I'll trade them, and you'd be able to kind of reset that, right? Like, it's the same thing, like, if I'm the Bears. If I'm the Bears, it's not, well, I'm not really thinking about tra trading uh, Justin Fields, but, oh, man, we got the second pick in the draft. You got Bryce Young there. Yeah, I'll draft Bryce Young, trade Justin Fields, and I get to reset that rookie contract. So if I'm the 49ers, from a business standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. Now, the issue is I don't think you can get a 12 for him. So – I have, I'm a team because, one, he came into the league needing a lot of work. And, yeah, you've seen the splashes again. You know, if he was a seventh-round pick, you might not give him as much leeway. But he's a first-round pick. So you see the upside. You see the ability. You see all the reasons why he was drafted so high. You just want that consistency out of him. Well, because the consistency is still the unknown, I mean, what are you willing to give up? A, a fifth? A sixth? And if that's the case, like, no, I, I, I'm, I might as well I, I'll keep him. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean the 49ers wouldn't even wouldn't even consider. I mean they would they would laugh at you if you offered a third round pick for Trey Lance. I would assume like you'd have to come with something serious for the yeah. 49ers to think about it. Something serious. And would a team? It's all about what the team feels about the players in this draft, how they felt about Trey Lance. I bring up the Texans now because of D'Amico potentially going there and the inside knowledge that he has of Trey Lance might feel a lot better about it than some other teams who didn't get to see him every day in practice. Um, he has been tutored by. Kyle Shanahan for two years and you go back and there's some tape to watch of him in the NFL. So it's not like a complete unknown. And it's probably no more unknown than any other quarterback prospect in the draft. Cause you've seen zero tape of him in the NFL. So I don't know. Uh, it, it's really interesting to what teams will think about, him. but uh, I, I agree. It's probably unlikely a team would come with what it would take to prime away from the 49ers, especially now. I thought it would be actually somewhat likely that Trey Lance could be traded before this Purdy injury. But now with Purdy being out for six months, I think it's extremely unlikely that train lanes would be traded. And it would take a it would take a pretty serious haul that I'm probably a team's not going to come up with. But right. just like the case for Jimmy Garoppolo, I, I think that when Kyle Shannon, when they asked, will Jimmy Garoppolo be on this team Sunday or whatever? And it was in that 2021 draft. He's like, I don't even know if we'll be alive on Sunday. Right. I, I think that Jimmy had a price and nobody met that price. So they kept him. That, that's what that's just the feeling I, I have. So well, I think it'd be the same for Trey Lance, where uh, Trey Trey could very well have a price 
but are you going to match that price? And if not, then we'll stick with them. And it worked sticking with Jimmy Garoppolo. You end up going to an NFC Championship game. Now, you, again, you just knew more. You know, Jimmy had 2019, that went to the Super Bowl. But, again, I, I think there would be a price. You'd be foolish not to. Have Tom Brady, game. the most likely free agent to be brought in by the 49ers? I'd say if you just want that reassurance of, I, we know exactly what we're getting, right? And you kind of, I don't want to say owe it to the veterans on the team, but they're not getting any young. Like Trent Williams, amazing. He is not young <laughs> anymore, right? right. Uh, George Kittle, getting older. Debo Samuel, you, I don't know how much longer he's going to be with the Niners, but you want to make use of however much longer that is with his contract. Like Brandon Ayuk, he's going to be entering that fifth-year contract soon. I mean, th there are a lot of players where it's like, we, we want to make good with what we have with this core group right now. So if, if that's your thoughts, then I could see them going that route. Now, if you just say, you know what, we really like Brock Purdy. We think he can lead us there. We'll see what we have with Trey Lance. But Brock Purdy's hurt right now. So, all right, let's go out and get a veteran. And I think it might look like a guy like Mike White, right, who played in a similar system with the New York Jets under LaFleur. Uh, you know, he came in. He, he played well enough to sometimes look like a starter and sometimes look like, oh, this is why he's a backup. But he's somebody that could – definitely operate in this offense and show you enough to where I feel like, you know, you could get through a game or so with him. And I think he'd be a good person to just kind of be around the young guy, Trey Lance and Brock Purdy and, you know, and kind of just create just some kind of uncomfortableness, right? Like just have a guy who could, who could just look good in practice. There's so now quite like, a few, I have to bring it every day. There's quite a few un unrestricted free agent quarterbacks. We talked about Tom Brady, but one we haven't brought up, which is the most obvious, is Jimmy Garoppolo. One more run with Jimmy G, Cry. I don't see it. Because I don't think that, and again, I could be wrong, but watching Brock Purdy, I don't think Jimmy gives you anything that Brock Purdy doesn't, except for maybe just this quicker release, right? Which his release is like in the 99th percentile of the NFL. So aside from that, and at least from a production standpoint, there is no, there's no drop-off there. So I'm not going to go pay Jimmy Garoppolo all this money and because he's not going to come in at $5 million, $6 million. So, no, nah, there's no and way Jimmy, I bring back Jimmy. Jimmy doesn't want to have to come in and compete again with Trey again and then Brock Purdy also, right? So, yeah. Right. I think it's very unlikely with Jimmy G. And with Jimmy G, unlike Tom Brady, I think it would be a different dynamic of, okay, this is QB1, everybody – Line up behind him, learn what you can from him for one year. It'd be a different scenario with Jimmy than it would be with Tom Brady, even an aging Tom Brady. Right. And you I imagine think Jimmy, Tom Brady. <laughs> Jimmy has worked his, I mean, and again, I know the injury, but he was actually playing good football before he got yeah. hurt. I think he has earned the right to go somewhere where, where he's appreciated, which he's appreciated in San Francisco, but just in the sense of, like, let me go to a situation where I don't have to look over my shoulder all the time. I don't have half the fan base hating me for whatever reason or because they want this young guy or that guy or they want Brock Purdy or they want Trey Lance. Let me just go to a situation where, hey, everybody loves me and I'm making money and I'm the starting quarterback. And I think he's earned that right. Yes, absolutely. And he doesn't want to go through the whole circus. He's done this with the 49ers so many times. It just seems really unlikely, even though he's the most obvious name and the guy that the 49ers are most familiar with. Uh, I, I'd say one name who's not a free agent, but a lot of people bring up who's very, very unlikely. And you never want to say never with this team because it's so insane. But Aaron Rodgers, I mean, you'd have to trade for him. He'd make a whole lot more money. The 49ers are not going to have a lot of money to play around with. Uh, the reason Tom Brady might work is because he might play for something like 10 or 15 million, right? Where you're not having to pay this $30 million starting quarterback salary because he just wants to come back home and play one more season with his hometown team, the, the San Francisco 49ers, right? And it's a short term deal. It's basically a one time, one year thing, maybe a two year deal to help salary cap numbers. But um, yeah, Aaron Rodgers just not happening. So I, I think we can erase that name. Not happen. I think, and again, I don't know the specifics of his contract, but I feel like it was like three years, fifty million a year, or something like that. For Rodgers, oh, yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. It's yeah, it's in the forties at least. Now he did and, say he'd be open to restructuring it, and I don't know if that was for the Packers or for 
maybe a, a team that is looking into him. But I think Mike White's a good name. I'm just going to run through the list of free agent quarterbacks, Croc, and you tell me of those, any that you like. So we mentioned Tom Brady already. Daniel Jones, Geno Smith, Jacoby Brissett, Lamar Jackson, ain't happening. Uh, Andy Dalton, Niners don't have enough draft picks to trade for Lamar Jackson. Um, which would, but his name's going to get floated out there. So be prepared for that. And they can't, they can't afford to pay him either because he's going to get an insane amount of money to talk about oh, injury running quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson, how about the, that scenario? <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, okay. we're, we're not talking about that one. Taylor Heineke, Baker Mayfield, Cooper Rush, Sam Darnold, and that's it. I I think of the most the, the the ones that have the most potential, I'd say Mike White, Taylor Heineke, and maybe a Teddy Bridgewater. Sorry, one more. Uh, I'm going to add to the list. Yeah, Teddy Bridgewater and Gardner Minshew. And I could see Kyle and John liking Gar Gar Gardner Minshew. Now, does he fit the offense? I don't know, but. He did go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cowboys and have to score, what, 30-something points. He also threw, like, two picks. But uh, I, To be honest with you, Tom Brady is the only free agent that makes sense. You, you, so you either have to bring in somebody who you think is going to start for you or someone who's okay with maybe being the number three. Yeah, and that's hard. I think that's Taylor right? Heineke. Right, T Taylor Heineke, Mike White. Mike White. Yeah. I'd be good with those two guys. And Nate Sudfeld might be a free agent too. I mean, you know. Uh, Nate Sudfeld is on the list. Yes, Nate Sudfeld. There you go. Well, he's definitely coming back for sure, right? <laughs> Although he'd probably rather be the number two in Detroit than the number three if the Detroit Lions don't sign anybody or don't draft right. anybody. So there's a lot. I mean, we're, we're, this is going to be nonstop. We have a ton more to talk about with the quarterbacks. What's going on with the San Francisco 49ers in the offseason? All the other free agents on the 49ers. There were some exit interviews, and we heard from Mike McGlinchey and Jimmy Ward. We got to talk about those guys, how the 49ers put this roster back together for the 2023 season. And, of course, Croc and I will be with you every step of the way, including a little senior bowl chat as well this week. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Back tomorrow right here locked on 49ers <laughs>